Hello, welcome back to episode four of the DevForce 2010 Silverlight Tour with your host Ward Bell here. Uh, in this episode, we're going to clean up the application we've been building because there's some stuff in there that we just have to fix. Uh, like the fact that when we launch it, it appears that there's nothing on the screen, there's no data uh, until we navigate. Um, the employee form seems to be disabled, even though it isn't. The log area doesn't scroll, the panels are all fixed, and there's this latent uh, add employee bug that you don't even know is there, but I'm going to point it out to you. Uh, we'll go over all these things more slowly uh, as we start now. Let's take a look at some of the infelicities in the uh, user experience. Uh, first, you notice that uh, nothing shows up when we launch the application. Uh, that's no good. We have to go up and we have to navigate uh, uh, at least once in order to get our very first uh, employee. Uh, the next thing you notice is that the employee form area, the data form area, is grayed out um, after the uh, related orders are fetched. Uh, and um, uh, we have to actually click in it in order to make it uh, come to life. Uh, here again, I move forward and you see that it's grayed out again. Now it's actually not disabled, although this is the visual indicator for disabled. It's actually alive, it just is grayed out. And there's some kind of bug in the data form for this, honestly. Uh, but we're going to have to figure out how to fix it. Uh, now, by the way, if I go back and the orders are actually already in cache, no problem. You'll notice that uh, there, you know, when we went backwards and we didn't have to go out to the database to get it, it was there. Um, but uh, uh, the minute we uh, start going forward again and having to go out and fetch orders, we get back into that gray state. Uh, the next issue for me is that the log area doesn't scroll. So as we you know, incur more events, we're not going to be able to see them. Uh, and uh, finally, I'd like to change the uh, size of these various panels uh, so we could use some grid splitters here uh, to uh, make that easier to do. So let's go fix these things one by one. We'll uh, go back into the model and uh, the reason that we uh, had a problem here, the reason that it's not showing up is that when, uh, when we start, uh, when we bring up the page, the list is empty. We haven't told the, the list that the first item should be selected. So uh, as far as the uh, UI is concerned, there is no current employee and there's nothing to show. Uh, that's going to be pretty easy to fix. We're just going to change our callback method here uh, so that uh, when we're after we're done fetching the employees, We'll take the first employee out of the list and we'll set it to the current employee. Now the current employee wasn't implemented originally with an I notify property changed. Oh, it was just a you know automatic property with getters and setters. We're going to cheat here at least in our first attempt and just raise property changed as soon as we set this. Uh, but really we'll we'll want to consider moving the raise property changed into the current employee property itself. Okay, let's build and see if that did what we hoped it would do. Loading. Yes, you'll notice that we're, we've solved it. Um, but we haven't solved the grayed out problem. But at least we're getting data when the application starts. So let's go tackle the grayed out problem. I have determined empirically uh, that the, there, there's something um, that the, some interaction between the busy indicator and the data form that's not happy when there's a trip to the server. It has really actually nothing to do with DevForce as far as I can tell. So the solution I'm going to pro do here is a little bit of a hack. I'm going to create a second busy indicator and I'm going to wrap it just around um, the uh, orders grid. Uh, and so now I've got two of them. I've got the outer one and an inner one. Uh, I'm referring to, a, you know, I'm going to control the inner one with this new property, is order busy. So I've now got to go create an is order busy property, uh, which I'm uh, uh, going to do here. And, and I'll use a getter, but watch this. I'm going to leverage the same backing field that is used for the is busy property. Uh, I'm going to use the same is busy pro uh, property to drive two separate indicators. Now, right now, you can see it raises property changed on on is busy, so that's the outer one, the outer uh, busy indicator. Uh, and I'm going to change the way this property works. So um, uh, the the property I actually changed, the property name I actually raise when I raise property changed, could vary. 
uh, according to whatever uh, underscore uh, busy property is. Now, when I'm loading employees, I want the outer one, so I'm going to raise the is bro uh, busy property. This is the way it starts when we do the employee query. Um, <laughs> hey, this is a hack, okay? But it works. All right. So every time thereafter, uh, after I get the employees, really the only thing I want to uh, have invoked is the inner uh, busy indicator. So I'm changing the property name to is order busy, and that's what's going to get raised. So we'll see that behavior here. Notice there, you know, right now as we're getting all the employees, everything's grayed out, and then everything comes in. Actually, you can hardly tell at all. As I move forward, uh, the loading is on the only on the order grid. Everything else is free to be edited. On to our next two problems. We're going to go back into the XAML here just briefly, though, um, to make that a little clearer that the when we're using the second busy indicator. Okay, so we want to replace the items control with a list box because that's going to give us a scroller, so we can scroll the uh, log down to the bottom. And now we're going to add uh, some grid splitters, so which are in the SDK, uh, to our grid. And you, you just tack these into the bottom here um, below the grid, and then you set the grid rows to the uh, to the rows where you want the splitters to appear. See how that works? Okay, that was the loading of the employees and then we had the loading of the orders. You saw that text change. Watch again, watch closely in the middle. There we go, loading orders. So that's fixed. Hey, well look at this, we've got splitters and when we drag that down the scroll shows up so we can scroll uh, the log area and we can move the top splitter and uh, that's much more usable. Okay, uh, you know what? I forgot to show you that validation works. Uh, so if uh, the name is required, uh, that shows up just like you might expect. Neglected to show you that insert works. Here's our brand new one with a temporary ID of minus 100. Here's my tribute to Frank Zappa naming the person Fuzzy Dice. Notice that the ID changes after the async save. Save is async just like query is async, so it shows up later. Move back and forward, and there it is, Fuzzy Dice. It's been saved. It's in the list. And we can delete it, too. We press that Delete button, and that's gone, and we had that auto-save, so it no longer shows up in our list. I found a little bug in our application that won't bite us now, but will bite us someday, and talking about it gives me a chance to tell you more about DevForce. And it, it happens right here in this employee collection changed, which is raised whenever uh, new employees arrive in our employees collection and we intended that that would uh, kick off you know, when we click the insert button um, but there's something else going on here and if we put a breakpoint on it uh, and let it rip we'll see what's got me worried so we're actually running and by refreshing the browser we effectively restart the application and so here it is and we're loading the employees and what we're broken here while we're loading employees we haven't clicked the insert button and if we look we see that uh, the employee we're adding is is unchanged what does that mean uh, uh, it's Nancy DeVolio one of the employees we're loading from the database that can't be right uh, we're, we're only supposed to be here when we click the insert button and uh, you know if we stop here and, and we think about what's going on here um, we realize that this is being raised on two occasions and we're getting this method on two occasions once when we're loading the uh, employee collection because that's also adding and also when we're uh, doing the insert we were fortunate not to be hurt by this confusion because had our new entity creation logic here done more than just add the employees to uh, the manager which as it happens is harmless with existing employees but had it tried to modify them say set the name uh, we would have been in trouble and so we have to ask ourselves uh, how are we going to distinguish these uh, two very different ways in which uh, entities are added to the collection one way to distinguish the two cases is if the employee is already in cash uh, because we know this to be true, that when we're fetching the uh, employees from the database, when DevForce is bringing them back, it actually puts it in its own entity manager cache, and only after it's already in cache does it add it to the collection. So if we put some guard logic in here that says don't proceed with this uh, add method if the employee is already in cache, we'll exclude the case 
where we're adding um, uh, entities that are already in cash. So our, our, our next question is, how, how do we know if they're in cash or not? We'll put in a guard clause here that says if any of these incoming employees, these employees being added to the collection, if any of them, and, and there really is only going to be one, but if any of them, uh, any of these employees has an entity aspect that, now what's entity aspect, you ask? Um, normally when I program against my business objects like employee, I'm really only interested in them as business objects. What's employee-like about them? And I don't want to see, I don't want to be bothered with framework considerations, persistence considerations. I don't want to think about them as entities. I want to think of them as about employees. But every once in a while, like now, uh, I need to uh, see their em their entity nature and entity aspect gives me uh, access to um, the entity characteristics uh, in particular properties uh, of employee in its guise as an entity in the dev force world one of those aspects is the entity state which tells me whether this entity has been unmodified or whether it's been changed or deleted or whether it's been added or whether uh, as in this case um, the data form has created the entity but it has not yet been added to the entity manager which is to say that it is detached okay so if it's detached it must have been that the data form uh, created it nude it up but we haven't added it to the manager yet so We'll just wrap the logic that does that, and that's all we're going to do here. We can do more, uh, and let's put a breakpoint on and build this and see if it works. Here it comes. We're loading. We haven't hit any breakpoint yet. That's good. There's Nancy. Good. We move forward. Uh, fine, because we shouldn't be stopping. We should only hit the breakpoint if we click plus, and we do. There we are. We're about to add the employees. There's only one to the manager, and if we drill in and look at it, we see that it is indeed detached. That's the one we're looking for. All is well. Uh, now, maybe you've had an oops. Maybe you deleted something out of the Northwind database that you wish you'd kept or you uh, have uh, crunched the data, somehow munged it, and uh, you'd like to just get that Northwind IB sample database back. Um, well, we've got a little video um, on the side for that called Recover Northwind IB. Look for it um, so you can do that. Uh, so that concludes part four of our Silverlight tour. Thank you. Uh, we have more videos coming. Uh, please uh, come back and see us again.